Hi, how are you folks doing? My name is James Clem. Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about removing a zirconia crown. There's a lot of crowns that are bonded in today, including zirconia, and I've had some comments on my social media about teeth breaking when taking off bonded zirconia crowns because you just can't create a groove and separate it necessarily. And sometimes we don't even know how it was bonded in, so we have to be really careful unless we have an urban YAG laser. Sometimes these are hard to take off. So I want to talk to you about my methods of taking these off and also how to place them on so we can get them off. But I'm up here at my homestead walking and trying to improve my walk since my surgery on my hip and I am getting a more natural gait. As you can see here, I'm out walking and I really enjoy my time up here. I'm up here about 60% of the time. The other 40%, I'm either out lecturing, teaching, or practicing at my practice down in Santa Rosa and I appreciate my team so much because they help make this happen. So here's the case scenario. I have a dear patient who had a fall about nine months ago and she broke a number of her front incisors and I worked with an oral surgeon on this one where we were able to extract the roots, guided placement, use Strauman implants and uh, we were able to restore those in a few months using a CEREC approach with individual restorations, one piece, and this is uh, Emax BL4, and it worked out really well, and she's very happy. But in the meantime, while we were working through this process, she got out of the hygiene loop for about a year and a half. And in addition to that, some of her medication she was taking, she had some other surgical issues, and she's almost 90 years old. She lost her saliva. We weren't too concerned because she has excellent hygiene and sometimes this will catch you off guard. Well, to make a long story short, she developed some root decay. And one of the restorations we had to upgrade was a molar that I had placed a Katana STML about uh, probably three years ago and cemented with a resin glass ionomer. I have not been a fan of bonding in zirconia, even though Karari wanted us to do that with their first phase of zirconia, because it's a 5Y. I've been cementing those with resin glass ionomer ever since I placed them, and I like Katana zirconia as well, and I've never had a problem with them fracturing. The secret is just making sure you get enough occlusal clearance so you're paying attention to the engineering dimensions that are recommended by the company for a 5Y zirconia. What I have done though to keep these restorations in, there's two things. I do provide some internal undercuts before centering with an inverted cone. And by doing that, it allows us to lock that restoration into the cement. Number two is I make sure I sandblast the restoration really well. And I've been using resin glass on cement for zirconia ever since I've been placing zirconia. And I have not really seen delamination issues using this approach when I've used it this way. So what was interesting about removing this restoration was I went ahead and sectioned and like we have removed hundreds of crowns in our career, we use a separator and we ease those parts off the tooth and that worked quite well but it was difficult getting this crown off and at her age this tooth was an endotooth i didn't want to see a portion of the tooth come off in one of the pieces of the crown that was being removed i'm very careful using that now let's imagine that was bonded in that would have been difficult to remove if you have an Irving Yag laser, that always helps out, which I do, to loosen the cement up underneath that crown restoration. But a lot of people don't. And I've had emails and I've had messaging to me on social media of creating a hemisection trying to move a bonded restoration. And now that we're seeing that with zirconia, it's something that we have to pay attention to. So I'm not a proponent of bonding on zirconia. I've done it in a few cases, but in general, I'm not. Now, do we have to be concerned about these restorations coming off? Well, using this approach, particularly sandblasting internally, but before that, creating undercuts on the integral surface of the zirconia crown before we center can add some mechanical retention. When a zirconia crown comes off, it's usually the cements on the tooth and the inside of the crown is clean, right? So with some 
Subtle little undercuts creating mechanical retention. I have seen very good success for over a decade keeping zirconia crowns in place and it's something that I still do. This video is more about not providing too much retention on crowns. I used to template PFMs and cement those in with Panadia just to keep them on and making sure I had a good bonded adhesive seal way, way, way back in my career. And what I did find out after a while was, you know, a few decades later, I had removed some of them and the retention was profound. I had to remove the PFM in sections not to split the tooth or portions of the tooth off. I just wanted to make this comment since I do get questions about it. And I have found very good success with all the zirconia options in our Sherrick Clinical Theater, even though I'm using other methods here up at my homestead. I have a digital lab and I'm using the uh, PM7 and some other approaches within digital dentistry. I'm still a solid prime scan, prime mill, M6L user. I haven't gone away with that. It's been very useful for me in my clinical theater and I'm very grateful for that technology. But I did want to address my method that I've used with a lot of success, keeping zirconia crowns and bridges in place. So if you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. I love making these videos and passing on information. One more comment. I often get questions here on the YouTube channel about topics that you folks would like to see. And I do take that to heart and try to make as many videos as I can to apply here. Now I do have my online teaching where I make a whole lot more videos that's a complete curriculum within the CEREC system using various applications. And that's where I spend most of my time creating content. The content here on YouTube are samples of some of those videos, even though I wanna provide a wealth of information here on YouTube to make it worth your time. If you like what I do here, you'll really like my online membership. And that's what allows me to sponsor these videos. And I enjoy doing that. In addition to, you'll have direct access to me to ask questions and comments and things like that on the online membership. I'll post that link below here, but uh, would love to see you there as well. So thanks for watching and I look forward to uh, your comments and seeing you in the next video.